It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. When you give your life to Jesus, you can't give your life to Jesus un un unless first God the Father, the, 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 by the Holy Spirit, by his Spirit, draws you to Jesus. And once you receive Jesus, that's why the Bible says, as many as received him, not just heard about him, they met him and they received him for, for who and in, in the person that he was. That he is Lord, he is God. And as many as received him as their Lord and Savior, as many as received him to them, he gave them power, the authority, to do what? Become the sons of God. That, that's beautiful. That little scripture means so much. And we had the message recently, so we won't go back to it. We're going to rehash some things today, though. It's all about Jesus. There's no salvation without Jesus. I don't care how much we go to church. We can, come, we can come in here, in this place, in this sanctuary, five days a week, 
sing the songs of Zion, praise God, read the scripture. But unless people meet Jesus, unless people receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they'll bust hell wide open. That's, that's really something, isn't it? It's good to be able to say, I'm a son of God. I know God. Jesus came into my life. Jesus saved me. He brought me up. Praise God. And when Jesus saves you, he doesn't save you just to be idle. He gives you life. He spoke about that. I give you joy. I give you peace. All that good stuff. And he wants you to enjoy. They sing the song. He's given us hills and mountains. He's, he's, he's made this, this planet, and we're going to read about it. Y'all might have had some of it the other week when, when, when we were out. He made this planet, this planet to be inhabited. And he put a lot of stuff. He said, wine, even wine stuff, the, the product of the earth that makes glad the heart of man. All this, just everything. For the beauty of, 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 of the world, the earth, to behold God's handiwork and to enjoy it. But life is not just a party, and we have to remember that. Life is not just for our enjoyment. Our, our lives are to be lived in glory, honor, and in service to God. That's what's important. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't, man, the highest honor. A lot of people dream of, I'm going to be president one day. Okay, man, man, and, you know, people do. Somebody becomes whatever. And our highest dreams sometimes are, you know, are, and actually, to be honest with you, most of the time, people's highest ambitions and dreams are never realized. But the highest hope that anybody could have, the highest blessing that anybody could have, is to know that God has laid his hand on them. And he has them. Amen. That they have a forever. You ever heard people talk about forever homes for, for animals and pets and cats? Forever ever home in paradise with God, that we are his children, that he's with us now. So I pray that God blesses us today. We want to get into it. I was wondering, that's why I had to hustle up. Uh, I tell you what, let's, let's read this first since we mentioned it in the, the book of uh, Proverbs. Okay, the book of Proverbs, 19th chapter. And, and it says this, that in the 21st verse, that there are many devices in a man's heart. We, we, we have a lot of ambition. We make a lot of plans. We have a lot of things that we propose for ourselves. We, we want to lay out our life. And it's good. Make plans. Please don't misunderstand. Scripture, don't, don't misunderstand me. You're supposed to plan for your life. But there's a certain way, there's a way a believer has to plan. We don't, we, we don't just throw caution to the wind and whatever happens, happens. And our, our plans, the way we plan, our plans cannot be opposite what we know is the will of God. They can't be, our plans cannot be in conflict with God's grace, God's mercy, God's goodness, God's word. It's got to go right along with it. And it says that there are many devices. We can think of a lot of things that we want to do and plan on doing a whole lot of things. Many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless... The counsel of the Lord, what? That's what's going to stand. That is what's going to stand. The word of God, for one thing, the advice of God, the wisdom of God, the teaching of God, that most definitely is going to stand. And not only does it mean the advice, but when you look at it, and I had to take a look, but it's not, praise the Lord. And, but I wanted to know, well, what? What's the, what, what does that mean? The counsel of the Lord, his word, his truth, his goodness, God's plans for your life. God counsel also means the intent. God has intentions for us. For everybody, nobody escapes. Every believer has a purpose. And God has certain things going on that he intends for your life. 
And he, he, he even tells us over here, and I have to, have to, well, let me read this one first. In, in Isaiah, while we're here, God has intention. Now, we, we have a lot of dreams. We have a lot of hope. We make a lot of plans. And sometimes, and sadly, we should know better. We'll make plans without even asking God. Come on now. We'll make plans concerning serious career changes, our lives, children, family, without even asking God, without even go, going to him and, 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 and being like Jesus and say, Father, this is what I want. I'd love to see this happen. I'd like to for you to be with me in this. And, and we go at life sometimes like we don't care whether God's in it or not. We have ignored him. Do you know that neglect, and I think we've talked about this here recently, neglect is a crime. E even in, in society, neglect is a, is a crime. You don't have to physically, say, beat up on a kid to be put in jail for, for hurting that kid. But neglect that child, you still go to jail. Yes, sir. Because you have contributed yes, to the destruction, the sickness, the ill health, or the death of that child. Yes, sir. Just through, and that's what we do. We, we, we try to leave God, we, in, in leaving God out, we neglect our own spiritual lives and natural lives, successes in the Lord. We neglect that. We neglect our own purpose. What did Jesus pray? Father, not what? Not my will. Not just what I, I this is what I want, if, if it be possible, he prayed when he was facing crucifixion. Let this bitter cup pass from me. He knew that he was going to be separated from God. Who, who he didn't want that? His son, the word of God, been with, been with the father all that time. Never without him. Never out of the presence of God. Never, out, never away from God. One with God forever. And he didn't want to see if it be possible to be any other way. Let this bitter cup pass from me. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will. Not what I want, but your will be done. And that's the way we are to approach God in each and everything we do. When we're, when we're ready to make decisions, yes, it's good to, to we, we have to, uh, the, the Bible teaches us, when they were talking about, uh, I think the, the, the house of God was, was in bad repair or something, and people were living, living it up, living, taking care of their own lives, building their own houses, which God wants you to. But he said, consider your ways. <laughs> so you're living good, so you're going to let this, this house you know, just, just fall in, 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 in bad repair, just fall apart. So consider your, your way. So God wants us to do what? To consider things. And we have to consider our lives. We have to consider, and that means to think about what we're doing. Involve God in your life. See what God wants. What does he want from your life? And there are many times that you'll find that there might be, a, and it's a, a good, clean desire, a good, godly desire, something that does have purpose and benefit not only, yeah, for you, but it will, it will benefit other people too. And, and this is what you want to you take it on in life. And sometimes that thing that's there, that desire, it'll be something more than just uh, something you like. You know what I mean? It's something you'd like to do. It will be something that's a part of you. And you already have the vision of it. You already see the vision. It's all, it's, you're already not, I hate to say, use the word obsessed with it, but it's a part of you. That, because that thing has been put in your heart by God. And that's what the Bible says. We live right. We do. We trust God. We do the right thing. That God, and, and we ask him, we, we seek his face, that God will do what? He'll give us the desires of our heart. Not that he'll, I like ice cream. He's going to give me ice cream. No, it's not. No. God is going to give me proper, he's going to give me the desire for certain things that are pleasing to him. 
and that will bless his name, glorify his name. God's going to give me the desire to involve myself in certain things that will be of benefit yes, sir. Yes, sir. to other people yes, sir. and to the saints of God. Yes, and the Bible teaches us, as we have therefore opportunity, as, let's, let's do good to whom? To all men, then the Bible said. Yes, but especially to those who are of the household of faith. But God, God's good to all people. Let the sun shine on the evil and the good, just, just, just the light. So he, he wants us to be a blessing to humanity. And God has put you here. God is, he has blessed, man, so many ways. So he has put us here to be a blessing. And it's amazing how we, we, we look at this and we get involved with life, with different activities, without one time sometimes consulting with God. That's the, oh man, if you're going to get advice, if you're going to get a, a, a leadership council, a session from anybody, we go to leadership conferences, we do all kinds of things in our lives with different careers and professions and trainings and extra teaching. You can get teaching from anybody. Take it from the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Take it from God. Involve God in your life. He wants you to be a blessing. The counsel of the Lord, no matter what we think, and that's why sometimes some people will work at certain things all their lives. Come on. Oh, I felt that one. <laughs> okay. Sometimes people will work at things all their lives. Never really become more than and we don't want to just be like everybody else. If you, you know, you want to stand out with something. Never just, but they'll never become just uh, semi-professionally proficient at it. Work all their lives, and it never amounts to anything. But they still trudge on doing. Why? Why? Have you ever thought for one second that that's not what God has for you? Or that's not your purpose? Amen. Have you ever thought that God has a, other things in mind for you? Something else in mind for you? It never pans out. Uh, and then on the other hand, and that's, that's uh, that does, that does uh, sort of have another side to that coin. But if you do things, if you, well, we'll, we'll talk about it later. You, you, have to, you have to do it the right way. Yes, don't think because you're good at something that you don't need teaching. Come on. That you don't need training to make it better. That you, don't, don't, don't think you don't need to get involved with other people. You lose out. If you're good at it, praise the Lord, you're good at it. That, that doesn't mean you stop studying your craft. Because you, oh, I'm good at it. That doesn't mean you don't want more. I want more of God. God's counsel, and God has a counsel, and you can look it up in the Hebrew. That's what it's talking about, God's intentions, his purpose for our lives. That is going to stand no matter what we think. You know, and, and, and what do we do? We, we try. We don't wait on God to, to, to show us. We don't seek his face for a purpose or for, for our, our reason for, for existence, for being here. We try to take on the purpose that we like. <laughs> don't we? Don't we do that? And if, if it doesn't just burn in you, come on now. If it doesn't benefit, Anybody else. And, 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 and sometimes we, we get in that bag, you know, where we, we think that God just wants to bless us. He just wants to keep, and he does, though, he does. He wants to pile the blessings on, and uh, our lives is not about anybody else. I'm on this island blessing by myself, and the Lord's just putting it on me. Because this is where he wants me to be. He just wants to bless me, 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 and then me, myself, and, and, and mine. You know, I, no. It's not about that. It's about the almighty God having a purpose for your life that he wants to display. Yes, he wants to display your, put your life on display. Then look at what God has done. 
through and with this person. Look how God has turned this person's life around. Look how he's, he's blessed this person. And to put that person's life on display as a light. Did, did Jesus say, you are the light of the world? A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. So that your life can be a beacon to other people. You can draw other people. You can help other people. That's what it's about. Isaiah 54, and starting with the 14th verse. Let's start there. Everything has purpose. It doesn't matter. God wants you to, and he will equip you. He wants you to be equipped. He wants you to be fit for duty. Oh, well, I'm sick. I'm bedridden. You, if you are fit for duty, if you're here, if you're still alive, you are totally, you are more than fit for duty. You stand in, in the, the ranks of believers. You stand in, in all present and accounted for, sir, in the ranks of those who are in service to the Lord. I'm here, Lord. And I want my life to be accounted for something. Because one day, we're going to read that. Somebody get that ready. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every believer. There'll be no unbelievers at that judgment. There are a lot of judgments mentioned. We, we, we know about the three main ones. But there are a lot of judgments mentioned in the book, in the Bible. And God uses some people. He uses other people. He used to use the, the, the nations of... Uh, like the Assyrians and other nations, sometimes the Babylonians he'd use, and uh, some, sometimes the Amorites, the Amorites, different ones to, to bring, to declare his judgment, to act out his judgment on his own people. Isn't that something? And then he'd turn around and punish them for it. <laughs> Put your hand on my people. <laughs> okay. God loves his people but he's a God of judgment. Now, in Isaiah, the 54th chapter, it tells us something, and it's so very important. The 14th verse, it tells us that in righteousness, saints of God, believers, in righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. Hallelujah. Wow, who doesn't want that? You shall be far from oppression. It doesn't mean that people won't try to oppress you, but you won't be oppressed. Oppression won't be able to handle you. You'll be far from it. You'll be far from oppression, for thou, listen, for thou shalt not fear, and you'll be far from terror, for it shall not come near thee. I've got you, saints. That's what the Lord is telling us. I've got you. Behold, they shall surely, even when people do, they shall surely gather together, but it won't be by me because I brought them. I didn't cause them to do it. And whosoever shall gather together against thee, against the people of God, they're going to fall for your sake. For you, because I love you. They'll fall. God will bring them to their knees. He said that. And he went on to talk about his, his creative power. And he lets us know something while he's talking about that. He says, behold, say, just look at it. I have created the smith. And we, we think we've had this before. The smith that blows the coals in the fire. The blacksmith that uses the a bellows to, to, to fan air or fan of some sort. To, 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 to cool down or to, to heat up the, the coals yes, sir. Yes, sir. so he can forge instruments. Yes, sir. Blacksmiths in olden times, especially in the old, old English times, I think we, they still have blacksmiths, but they used to, they had all kinds of responsibilities. They just didn't deal with horses. Yes, they made tools. Yes, if they needed a certain tool like to take off a wagon wheel, they made it. Yes, They were equipped with that kind of ingenuity. Where did it come from? And God is letting us know something here. Yes, sir. I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire and that brings forth an instrument for his work. 
He makes tools for what? The kind of work that he needs to do. If he wants to build a house, he won't go out and try to drive nails with his hands. He's going to take iron or steel or something and, 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 and melt it down, put it on the anvil and, and fashion a hammer's head. He'll make the tools. He'll make a wrench. There used to be this old saying, I guess people say it, that what? Necessity is what? The mother of in invention. But God supplies the seed, so God's the father of all creative works. God is. He said, I, 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 the, 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 even the blacksmiths have, have this kind of knowledge and authority and wisdom and the wherewithal to know how to fashion these. And God is telling us something. He said, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire and makes an instrument, brings forth for his work, and I created the waster. Whatever that waster, waster was, an enemy nation, a banned army of locusts to destroy fields from harvest, Whatever, I created the waster to destroy. I made every. he's telling us that I have made everything for a purpose. There's nothing made that does not have purpose. Nothing's made or created that, that does not have any purpose at all. God made everything for a purpose. He even made the waster to destroy what he wanted destroyed. He made somebody, something to take care of it. And then he tells us, saints, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Listen, we, we know that scripture. And every tongue that shall rise in judgment against you, you'll condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. They don't stand in their own authority nor their own righteousness. I've covered them. I've given them righteousness. We're righteous because God said he was. And God has created us for purpose. Made us for a reason. He saved us for a purpose. God didn't save us just so we could come to church and look pretty. And so every now and then he could take a, a glance in his curio of what? What nots? <laughs> oh, Tiffany, you're such a cute little what not. You just, God just loves to see you sitting here. So, Jenny, Sean, oh, God just loves to see you show up. Come on now. That's not the reason. He wants us to come together true enough in fellowship. And in service and praise and glorifying God and hearing the word of God and learning to be more acquainted with him, to be more acquainted with his word, to eat from the blessed table of the word of God. Because that's, that's what we live by. Every word that proceeds from, forth from the mouth of God, we live by the word of God. But we all have purpose. God, is, he's letting us know, I haven't made anything without purpose. Even the blacksmith, I made him. And fix him so that he can make tools for his own work that will benefit other people. And we find that sometimes we, we think that we're doing God a service just because we come to church. It's, it's not about that. That's part of it, the Bible. This, that's the word of God. It, yes. I'd love to come together. Love to see the saints. Love to come in the sanctuary to inquire of God's word. Lo love it. Love to have fellowship with the saints. But it's not just about showing up. It's about being a participant. It's about everybody bringing something. It's about everybody walking in their purpose each and every day. We don't just wait till we get to church and say, that's my purpose. To be a church goer. No. God, and he did, again, he did tell us to do what? Not forsake what? The assembling of yourselves together. Do come together. Have fellowship with each other. Have fellowship with God's spirit, with the Holy Ghost. As, as a local body, the body of Christ. 
inquire from God's word and learn. And he tells us this, and since we, I'm going to read it here in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. So, and how, I, I am, I know I'm, I'm one. If you have been saved, now if you're not saved, you're not going to go into rapture anyway, okay? I hate to say it. I'd love for you to, I want to see you there. I want us all to be caught up together. Yes, all believers are. All people who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, man, we, we're all going to be caught up together with even the dead in Christ. They're going to rise first, and we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Praise God. That's, that's the object of the whole game. To meet the Lord in the air. We're going to meet him. We're going to see him. Only those who've already met him. Those who are already believers. They've been saved. They love God. And if you're saved, your life, your, your life demonstrates that, you know? You, it, it's, it, it's obvious. Your life manifests. The present, and it, it's so true. A believer's life manifests the presence of the one they believe in. You can't live without that happening. It's part of it. You can't say, well, I love Jesus, but I, I just, I'm just straddling the fence. No you, well, no, you don't love Jesus. I'm saved. I'm just straddling the fence. No. You know, the Bible tells you even the, out of the same fountain, bitter water and, and, and pure water can't come out of the same fountain anyway. One or the other. God has no gray area. I've never seen any. There's no gray area. Lost or saved, he's never, he's not, Jesus never taught about anything else. Brought the kingdom, you in the kingdom or you not? And one day, since we're kingdom children, and, and, and parents, by the way, make sure that you, you do. Don't be mean to your kids and, and don't mistreat them. Don't scream and whatever you do. Don't scream and holler at them and just curse them. And, come on. Don't, you know, raise them properly. A lot of stuff, a lot of it, and I won't say all of it, it's, a lot of it just comes from wickedness, comes from the signs of the times. It's, it's been prophesied, spoken of. Even as it was in the days of Noah, every imagination of the thoughts of man's hearts, evil continually violence was rampant among people in the days of Noah. And we're looking at that now. The product of, of the, the getting together, as young folks would say, the hooking up of the fallen angels with, with women and producing ungodly children and they had children. They were ungodly, mean, cruel people. So we're seeing that in our society. Violence and craziness. And, and we're seeing a lot of it that comes from, from homes that were full of violence. Coming from homes of parents that neglected to teach them the proper way to live. How to love each other. How to love God. First of all, having the Lord in your own life. When God sowed his seed, he didn't just leave it to just, okay, whatever happened, if it comes up, it does. But he tended to it, nurtured it, fed it, fertilized it, blessed it. And that's why we do, our, we do your children the same way. Because what you raise in your home is what you turn loose to society. And that's what's happening. A lot of people, who is the best? People are just so crazy. These kids are just out of hand. Why? Because their parents let them get out of hand. That's the truth. A lot of them is because their parents. We try to blame it on everything else. A lot of, a lot of it is because there has, have been no parental controls, no parental guidance, no love, no wisdom, no father sitting down with children and saying, Fathers won't even take responsibility at times for their own kids. No love of a mother, nothing, just, man, just whatever happened. 
I hope they grow up one day. They will. But into what? That's the thing. You are going to be held accountable. Even, did you know that? That's a blessing, that's a gift. And some people, when God saves, when people get together in marriage, the, 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 what's the objective? Not just, a, oh, I'm in love, you know. Oh, I'm satisfied. I got a good lover. I got a good, I have a good provider. What if something happens where he cannot provide? I mean, what happens? Well, oh, they got to find somebody new. <laughs> Uh, no. People ought to get married in the sight of God, but to have the same spirit as the one you're marrying. Whatever you do, have the same hope, the same spirit, love the same God. And to raise your children, how? In the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I think in the, in the book of, is it Malachi, that God says, you, you raise up seed, your children, to me. That's the purpose. And teach them. And no matter how much, you, and, and you won't win them all. Did Adam and Eve get both their sons straight? No. The counsel of the Lord is what stood. <laughs> yeah, one was evil. Eh? Cain was evil. He just went down, he went down the tubes. Cain was, he was destined. And that's the thing, give your, give your kids a shot. Give them a chance. And I said, well, God knows. I don't need to talk to them. I don't need to teach them. The Lord knows. Okay. Then whatever they do, you don't do that. You, you feed them the truth. You feed them, you show them. I don't say, you, don't browbeat them with the Bible. Don't teach a God and you don't show his love in your family. Love that child. Love them and, and raise them, and still you won't win them. You won't get them all. No. Cain, the Bible says, was just of that wicked one. That's not that they, and I'm sure they taught him just as well as they, they, they taught Abel. So it doesn't always work out. But for, for whatever we do, however we live our lives, whatever we neglect, God is going to call us into question about it. He's not going to neglect to judge our lives, even as after we've been saved. And this is not a judgment for a believer to say, well, let's see, are you going to hell or are you not? Let me think about it. It's not about that. It's to see what you did with God's life and your time while you were here on planet Earth. And it, the Bible tells us, let's, let's get it in Corinthians right quick, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, the 10th verse. And, and it says this, and this is only talking about believers. For we must all, every believer, appear before what? The judgment seat of Christ. See, the great white throne judgment is something, something different. If you wind up at the great white throne judgment, God's going to see you, judge you, send you to hell. That's it, eternally, eternal hell. And that's where most of the world, according to my Bible, is going, hell. Sadly, I just thank God. That's why we praise God every day for mercy. If you've been chosen as a child of God, as a vessel, as an instrument of God, but even believers, we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone, listen, may receive the things. We got, so we're going to receive something for the things done in this body, in his body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. If it's been good, praise the Lord. You live the life, the life the way God intended for you to live it, the way he taught you to live it, the way he spelled it out for you, the way he put it in your heart by the Holy Ghost to live. You lived it. But if you didn't, and you lived other, if you don't, you're going to live otherwise anyway. Now, believe it, we're not just live in sin. Please don't misunderstand this. There are no, no sinners going to wind up 
in paradise. Sinners who have been saved, born again, saved by the grace of God and, and changed. They, be, they become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay, praise the Lord. And, and we're going to have, still have to face judgment. When, after the church is raptured away, praise God. It was, it's going to be a beautiful, wonderful thing. And we're all looking forward to the rapture. This is part of it. While this world is going to be going through seven years of, of the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the great tribulation period where it's going to be so, I mean, monstrous, demonic creatures turned loose on, on people, man. It's going, to, it's going to be bad. People dying and hell just everywhere. Just, it's going to be a mess. And while the world's going through seven years of suffering, we're going to be in paradise with the Lord, with Jesus. We're going to be learning, but we're going to be receiving rewards or the lack of rewards for things done in this body. The Bible speaks of it. Some, some people aren't going to be rewarded in a certain way. The Bible says that they, they're going to, so it's, it's, it's going to be something that's very, it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful that some are going to do what? Suffer loss. Everybody's life is going to be on display. Not just that physical life, that too, but the intentions of the heart, the mind, everything. Whole life is going to be on, on heaven's jumbotron. Whoa. And it's going to feel just like it's you. It's going to be everybody. So I'm not going to be saying, man, I didn't, I didn't know Marvin was like that. No, I'm going to be ashamed. Oh, God, God, I'm sorry. Well, oh, everybody's going to be like that. But the rewards are going to come, and the Bible teaches us that, that after all this, and this, that's in another scripture, after this, this judgment before the judgment seat of Christ, then we shall have what? Uh-oh, the praise of God. You know, not that God's going to say, oh, hallelujah to you. No, he's not saying that. He's going to commend us on whatever work we've done that was good. And that we did it by, by the power of his spirit, the Holy Ghost, and we did it in obedience to the, to the Lord, did it with proper motive. And everybody's wanting to hear those two words that's spoken, two statements, rather, spoken to St. Matthew, 25th chapter. Everybody knows those. Around the 21st verse, 23rd verse, I think it's mentioned twice in there. Everybody wants to hear this. Everybody. See, we want to hear it. Well done. Come on now. Well done. Are you doing anything? Come on. If you're doing nothing and, you're, and you can't fake it, if it's, not, if, you, if it's not a proper motive and you're doing it with the right in, intention and to the glory and praise of God, and you're not being, if you're not being faithful, doesn't mean you just do something once or twice. Lord, I'll be happy. No. That, to be faithful means to be consistently involved, constantly involved in what you, your calling, your life of God. For the glory of God. It's an ongoing thing. And we want to hear it. I want to hear it. But I know God's going to call out. He's going to call me out on, on all that other stuff. But we all want to hear, well done, thou, what? Good and faithful servant. We all want to hear that. Are we being good? Are we doing, are we doing anything well? Are we being good, not in our own goodness, but by the grace of God? Like the Bible says, we, we've obtained this ministry because we've received mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You good and faithful servant, enter thou into what? The joy of the Lord. Some people are going to miss that in eternity. Lord, have mercy. Who, who wants to do that? Some people are going to suffer loss. Now, who, who wants that? Because God definitely has a purpose. And if we ignore that fact, and we, and we, don't, we don't, like, feed into it, buy into it, and, 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 and eat of it, eat, eat the word of God and believe it, receive it, and get active, man, get busy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what you know is God's purpose for your life. 
you fall apart. So knowing the terror of the Lord, see, God is no better, nothing to be play, played with or to take for granted. And you can say, say all you want to, yeah, I, I really, I, I want to get to, I want to get to glory. I want to be with Jesus. But don't be silly. Say, well, as long as I'm getting there. See, that's, that's the wrong attitude anyway. I don't care if I have anything to present or not. That sounds like the man that took the, the, the blessing of God that God had given him, the gifts of God, and buried it. And that's what people do. Because in everybody, God has put something. Everybody. Every believer, God has put something in them that can be used, that can grow and shine forth for his glory. And people see they have this smart, that smart, that human street attitude. Well, as long as, long as I get there, I'll be all right. No, you won't. And, and, and undoubtedly, some people who have that attitude are not going to get there anyway. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We try to encourage people to persuade men to, to, to live right, to love God, to, to, to love the gifts that God has given you, to love God's ministry, to love his word, and to operate for the glory of God. We persuade men, but we're made manifest unto God, and I trust are made manifest in your conscience. Yeah, we're giving you God's teaching, God's word, and God's truth. Ephesians tells us, and, and we're going to, I, I got I, I to read it, though, because we know this. Well, I already know it, but I have to get it. It goes back to what God has done for us already. Ephesians, the second chapter. Y'all with me? How do you get to you? How, how do you know? Now, what you do, now, uh, truthfully, yes, you, you will, you'll like what God gives you to do. And at times, what it, it might be, and it, it'll be, it's going to come with challenge no matter what it is. But you know it pleases God. You know something that's in you that God has put in you, that God has gifted you with, and you're going to do it, you know? You won't dis get uh, discouraged because you have a challenge. Quit because you have a challenge. You know, for what? That's not a soldier. You can't stop being in the army. So why quit? Because they're shooting at me. You better shoot back. Come on now. You, come, come on, let's be for real. This is not playtime in the kitty corner. Oh, you better fire your weapon. You better do what God better be about the Father's business. Be about the business of the Lord, man. Yes, Ephesians, the second chapter, tells us something that is so true. This old oh, man, this, this eighth verse, for by grace, by the grace of God, the undeserved, the unearned, the unmerited love and favor of God, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. God, he, he took care of your salvation. My salvation, our salvation, totally taken care of by God. And equips us through the word of God by the Holy Ghost to live the life by giving us regeneration, making us new creation, a new creation in Christ, he equips us to live the life he wants us to live. And he's put in everybody what he wants them to do. And that's in the Bible. Everybody. What, your, what his intention is for your life. Woo! By grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody can take credit for salvation. Nobody can take credit for being able to live the life, however good it is, that you're living or do what you're doing in ministry. What You can't say, well, I this, I this, and I'm this, and I can do. No, it's not about you. God did that. God did something to you. He made you a tool. He is the smith yes, sir. that blows the coal yes, in the fire. Sir. You're the tool that God uses. Come on now. 
It's God's stuff. He does it all. God is the architect. He's it. It's all about him. We can take no credit for nothing. Praise God. We are the work of God. And that's why the Bible says that, that we are, in the 10th verse, that we are his workmanship. We are the product of his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works for a purpose which God has before ordained. When, what do you mean before ordained? That we should walk in these good works of this purpose that God has laid out for us. God has already laid them out for us, these good works, our, our, our purposes and intentions for our lives in eternity past. He's done it. God does not have whatnots. He does not have just church members no. God has people that he's saved. He has, he has people that he has recreated, given them a new nature. He's done the work. And Corinthians tells us, you, we have to, you, you have to see your calling, brethren. And understand, this work is not a you, not, not many wise men, not many noble men after the flesh are called. God has chosen you if you're saved. Me, the foolish things of the world to confound the mighty. God, never said, Ooh, some people will look at you and say, oh, I never thought he or she would. I thought they were so, you know, if you come from in life, high status, nothing wrong with it. That's good. Paul did. And people were afraid when they saw him. Look, that's the man that used to come and persecute us. It's he said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Good bloodline. But God humbled that man to the point where he gave his life for the witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, he loved God. And when people look and see people that used to live and live in the dirt and, and the trash and the garbage and filth of the world, and they see those, those individuals now whose lives have been salvaged by the Almighty, by God our Father. God has blessed him. He said, oh, man, look at him. I never thought they would make it. I didn't. God made me. God made me. Praise God. God's good. And it tells us that, well, I'm going to read this. I got to read Jeremiah. What, while we're here, New Testament, let's, let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy. We read this before. Hallelujah. It's amazing how you can, I don't know, yeah. God keeps us, he blesses us, he, he enters into our thoughts. He gives us his mind concerning things. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to seek his mind concerning matters of life. Seek the heart of God. In 2 Timothy, and we're going to close him in a little bit. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. Oh, okay, there it is. God's not giving us spirit of fear, power, love, sound man. But in the ninth verse, okay, again, so we are God's workmanship. So God has made us, created us for a purpose. God never saves anybody just, just so we can say, oh, I've got grace. I'm saved, praise the Lord. And that's it. We move no further and we do nothing else. We just, oh, I'm, praise the Lord, I'm saved. Well, praise God if you're saved. But being saved means that you are created by God, in the person of the Lord. Do you know how you become that new creation in Christ Jesus? Because that life of Christ, the life of God is placed inside of you. 
His word, his Holy Spirit is there to give birth to this new creature, this new creation in Christ Jesus. And, you to, and your life is going to glorify. You've got the seed of God in you, the seed of God's word, his anointing, his spirit, the seed of his word. Godliness is going to come from you. Oh, can't help it. One way, it's going to come from you. That's what you're born as. Born in the holiness of God. Born sanctified. Can you imagine that? Sanctified to God. Whoa. Praise God. And, and born for a purpose. We're his workmanship. We're made for his purpose. And he tells us here, and we're going to read this and, and then move on right quick. In 2 Timothy, 1st chapter, 9th verse, it talks about God. Well, in 8th verse, it says, be, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, Paul is telling Timothy, not be ashamed of me. Don't be ashamed of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. So the gospel, the good news, the good teaching can come with affliction. Oh, yeah. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's one of them. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us. Okay, so God has saved us and done what? Called us with what? With a holy calling. God's called us. With a holy, sanctified, God-ordained calling. If you're saved, there is a calling on your life. Say, I don't feel like I'm supposed to be preaching. Well, you're not called to preach. Maybe you're called for something else. Maybe you're called to be a good steward or, or somebody who's knowledgeable about the affairs of this world, and you're able to help people be blessed in their homes. You, you're able to raise a good family. You're able to teach children. You, you're, able, you're called to stewards over your children. Yes, sir. You're part of the government of God in some way or another. To use the gifts of God's spirit to, and, and, and to definitely, believers, you don't have to make them come out, but let the fruits of God's spirit automatically come forth from your life. And the fruits are not just for you to enjoy, it's for others. It's directed toward other people. Everybody has a calling. Every believer is made for a purpose, saved for a purpose. So God has saved us and called us with a holy calling. So whatever your calling is, you want to respect it because it's holy. It's sanctified by God. God is in it. God ordained it. Whatever that calling is, listen to this. Called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. He didn't, and some of us might have had abilities that God redirected, like he did Paul. He used Paul. He used some of the knowledge. He did, but God had already equipped him, gave him the knowledge. But then, then again, God continued to teach Paul. Did you know that? Continued to bless him and, and raise him up. Listen. Not according to our own works or things that we could have done on our own or we could have made this happen or we knew this about No. But according to his own purpose and grace, God has called us into, into ministry of some sort, one way or another, into his ministry. He's called us according to his own purpose, his purpose, not ours, and grace with the gifts of God, the blessing of God, the grace of God, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before. God had laid it out for us. Laid out calling out. Laid, laid out. We all, we all have a mission. 
We all have a functioning part to, to play in, in God's church, God's body, in God's ministry, all of us. And God laid it out before the world began, before it ever began. God's awesome. He is amazing. He's so amazing. And, I, and, and, and this is what he told, I got to read it. In Jeremiah, I might just have to run over some, well, not this one. Well, maybe so. Praise God. So you, you understand what that means then. We, we, we've talked about it often, often enough. In Romans 8, 8 chapter, Romans 28 verse, we know, you can know all things, no matter what it is. Some things might disappoint you as, as a person, as a human. It might disappoint you because things might not go according to your intention or your counsel, but believe me, the counsel of God will stand. His intentions will, see? And he'll, he'll cause everything that happens, good or bad, to work out for the good for those of those who do what? Who love him. And that's how you ask yourself, do you really love God? You love him. In, in, in love with Jesus, man, in love with God. To them who are the called, and we just read that in Timothy, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We pray according to his purpose. When we ask God for our, our secret desires and things of our hearts that, that we want, we want it to be in line with God's purpose. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't want my fleshly desires to just be fulfilled. Let it be your will, your purpose. God appealed to Solomon in the dream and asked him what? Tell me what do you want me to do for you? Whatever it is you want from me, I'll do it. And Solomon, it seems without any hesitation, see, I, he asked, because he, his, his father David, either he, was, he just died or near death, or so he just, and, he, and he was thrown. God had ordained that, that Solomon should be king in, in David's stead. He said, give me now wisdom, knowledge, and in one scripture, understanding, Give, give me a discerning heart and mind so I'll know how to, 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 to judge your people. These are your people. And I, I'm, I'm standing in, in the shoes of a great man behind my father, David. You, you've, kept, you've honored your promise to him. He's gone and now I'm king in his stead. So give me wisdom and knowledge so I can have proper judgment over your people. So who can judge your people that are so great? Let me please you. In, 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 in the kingship, in, in a sense, was a type of ministry over the nation of God's people to please God. And the average people, average, well, if I had a million dollars, Lord, I, I'd be all right. No, you won't. You have it today, and maybe a couple of weeks is gone. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm tired of those people that worked on my back. My neighbors raising hell all the time. Get rid of them, Lord. We got enemies rain. We get in, we get in our feelings. Rain down fine brimstone. Jesus said he corrected his disciples on that. Yes, sir. So those people we ran into some people that didn't want to follow you, didn't want to follow with us. But they rejected you. So should we call down fire, fire from heaven? They knew if Jesus gave them the word, they, it, would be, it would be done. All they had to do was, man. The authority, and that's another thing. The keys of, of the kingdom, we, we got to have, that, and, and, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, they're two different things. They might overlap. But the keys are the authority of God to do certain things. And the authority was given. They said, just give us, just tell us, you want us to ring that fire and brimstone? The, those keys, the authority, authority can be given at a word, a word from God. 
Say, just give us the word, and we'll call down fire. But he said, you don't know what kind of spirit you're operating under. Say, the Son of Man didn't come to destroy in his life, but to save me in his life. And that's what you want to look at first. And God told Solomon, he said, because you didn't ask wealth or riches or not even long life for yourself, not, not, didn't ask for the life of your enemies, I'm going to say wisdom is given to you. Knowledge, understand, everything you ask is yours and all that you di didn't ask. Wealth is yours. I'm going to bless you in such a way there's never been any king, nobody like you before, and won't be after you. I'm going to bless you to the fullest. And Solomon had a glorious, marvelous kingdom. And it came to an end. God gave it, but it failed. Because Solomon did. He loved many strange women. And what does that mean? He just met them and they was a stranger to him? No. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> Lord. Oh, boy. No. No. <laughs> No. Hmm. They were foreign. They were alien women. They were alien from, from the life of God. They were aliens from the God of Israel. Aliens. They didn't worship God. They worshiped all kinds of uh, idols and everything. And he built, he, 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 he did. He loved them. He loved some of them so much he cared about them. Some of them, obviously. He built, see, they, they sucked it. They, he didn't look at it like that. He wound up building temples. For the worship of idols. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wisest man ever lived. So don't think you can take the blessing of God and say, I got it, and I'll do what I want to now. You can end up in the gutter. I'm serious. Don't, please, whatever you do, don't say, no, that won't happen to me. Don't say that. Don't do that. I'm too smart. I'm too bright. That, that'll never happen to me. Don't believe that. It's by the grace of God that we're all here today. Jeremiah, the first chapter. Jeremiah, the first chapter, fourth verse. It says, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before Jeremiah, before prophet of the Lord, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. I formed you, first of all, and before I ever formed you in the belly, in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. Praise God, I knew you as my prophet. Come on now. I knew you as my son, as my daughter. I knew you in, in full splendor of what I want to make out of you. Before I ever formed you, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, uh-oh, while you were in, so that means that while you were in the womb, I sanctified you. Come on now. While you're in there, I sanctified you. I made you holy and set you apart for me, for myself. I did it. And this, and this is for every one of us. Every believer, I sanctified you. Listen. And then I anointed you. Come on, I put my anointing on your life. I, I sanctified you, made you holy. I anointed you as a prophet of the Lord. While you were still in your mother's womb. Yes, sir. Come on, praise the Lord. God, Father, you're something else. God is awesome. God is so awesome, so wonderful, so holy, so complete, so thorough in everything, in all his doings. God is right and holy and good and just. Hallelujah. God's just good. I did it. So when you came out, you were already my vessel. You were already equipped with the seed of, of what you would need to develop and grow into what I've 
called you to be. This is God. This is God. And this is for every child of God, every born again believer. Ooh, hallelujah. And he said, Lord God, I can't speak, I'm a child. And the Lord said, don't say I'm a child. Don't make any excuses. I've done and given everything to you that you need. It's in you already. There's no excuse for you not to stand on the wall and declare my word. My pro and, and you speak. And God said, I, he said, I'll be with you. They won't hurt you. They won't be able to. You speak to and give them the, what I have commissioned you to speak. You do what God has ordained you for, what God has anointed you for, what God has called you for from the foundation of the world. Because certainly, for sure, hallelujah, God is the smith that blows the coals in the fire. He's brought you forth a work, a wonderful work that's equipped for the purpose that he called it for. It's made for that. You're made for that. All of us. Hallelujah, Jesus. When, when God, y'all don't have to get this. I'm just going to read it right quick. I believe. When, it, it, going all the way back to creation. Just a couple of scriptures, one or two. In Genesis, it, it, it says this. See, when God sows his seed of greatness, goodness in your life, it's, it's there. It's all, you're already there. This Genesis, I mark this. When God, during the time of creation, God's making, the, okay, the third day, he's making the, the dry land and, and the sea and, and, and life and other, other plants and all that kind of stuff. And in the first chapter, it says in the 11th verse, it's so with the 10th verse, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth what? Grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose what? Seed is in it, in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And it says, look, and the earth brought forth grass. It brought forth this, this herb yielding seed after his kind and tree yielding fruit after, after its kind. See, the seed of, of, the, of, of what, whatever's in the seed, the DNA of the seed is what's going to be produced in, in, the, in the atmosphere, in the ground. And whatever seed of greatness, whatever seed of purpose and mission that God, God has for you is already sown in you. And it's going to bring forth exactly that made perfect in meat for the master's use. There's no way a plum tree could have brought forth pears. That wasn't in his DNA. And God has put certain things in a believer. Definitely the fruits of the spirit of God, he's going to bring it forth. The, the, what you, the, the attitude, the attributes, the, the, the understanding, the knowledge, whatever, whatever it is. And you have to grow, you have to learn that you need to carry out this mission that God, is, and that, I, I guess I will call it that, this mission of purpose that God has called you for, it's already inside you. It's there. You have to look for it. Let Develop it. Lead, let God, uh, allow God to lead you. Don't fight against it. And, and remember this, we're going to close out in, in Isaiah right quick. We'll go to Isaiah, and then one more scripture in Timothy, and we're going to go home. God willing. Praise God. Isaiah, I'm just, and I'll read these right quick, because I'm going to skip around in here. Isaiah, y'all might have had these last week, but I'm going to read them. Isaiah 45. Let's go to 12 first. Mm -hmm. God says, I have made earth. I've made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their host, all the host of heaven 
I commanded. Praise God. I have raised him up in righteousness and will direct all his ways, and he shall build my city. Who's this? This is not Cyrus, I believe. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price, not for reward, saith the Lord. This is a prophecy about Cyrus. There was another king, I believe, who was prophesied in the Bible, that God, when the, the rebellious prophet, God sent this prophet to cry against an altar, and the altar was lying in ruins, and he prophesied altar, altar, God's going to destroy you. That prophecy came, came to pass about a king, and his name was mentioned before he was ever born. Josiah. King Josiah. Two or three centuries before he was ever born, his name was mentioned. Isn't that something? God is awesome. His name was mentioned. See, God's counsel always stands. God's intentions are always going to stand. And then he said, thus, in the 18th verse, thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth, for what? Just, just to be doing it? No, he made it. He has established it. He has created it not in vain. God does nothing just to be doing something. He formed it to be what? Inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. And over in the, in the 46th chapter, quickly, this, yeah, let's, let's see, let's see. 46, 9 and 10. This, this is God. 46, ninth verse. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. I'm God. There is none else. I am God. That I am the absolute authority. There's nothing else outside of me. There's none else, and there is none like me declaring the end. When? From beginning. From beginning. I declared the end from, from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying what? Here it is again. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. That's God. And God's counsel will stand. Things that he's prophesied about us, it's, it's, sta it's standing today. And it's going to stand. 48, let's see what we got in 48. Seven, I don't know, five more. Oh, wow. Just two verses, 17 and 18. 48, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee to profit. I'll teach you how to have a beautiful, wonderful life that will benefit you and, and those around you. I am he that teaches you to, bit, to profit, which leads thee by the way that thou should go. Oh, and this is what, what we think as we get ready to close out this, this service today. Oh, because some, and I don't want to become a, a skeptic kind of person, but you know that everybody's not always going to hear you. Some people are going to come in, in the church, every Sunday, come in and go out without really taking something with them, without really participating with God's word, without really operating in God's word, without really obeying it. He, he, he said this, Oh, that thou had hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river. You peace, had peace like, like a river. You wouldn't be bouncing back and forth in life and struggling and, and being the tail and not the head all the time. Listen to this. That thy peace had been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. And your seed, if you just done it my way, your offspring, your seed also had been as the sand and, and and as the offspring of and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel of the sand, his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. If you just done it my way. And there's a, another scripture, I believe in Deuteronomy, it says about the same thing. Oh, if you just loved me, if you just obeyed my voice, if you just 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 live for me, then your children would have been blessed. I would have kept your children if you just done that. Your whole family could have been close to me and, and wrapped up in my love and, and my grace. But we neglect. We hear the word, praise the Lord, that was a good message. And before we can get on the parking lot, it's forgotten. Come on now. It's not used. It's not thought about. And God tells us, and we're going to close out, 
right here in the book of Timothy, right quick. But God has done it all in everybody. I know people talk about it and preach about it and say stuff, oh, there's a seed of greatness in everybody. Hey, if you're not saved, okay, you, you might have, that's potential in every human being for something, for some purpose. But in God's people, praise God, the anointing of God, Christ in you is the hope of glory. That is the truth. Praise God. The book of 2 Timothy, we're going to close out. 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Here, we're going to close out right here. Well, might as well read the first verse. Paul, in talking to his son in the gospel, he said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, not in your own wisdom, attributes, not in what you think you know, but be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. And the things that you've heard, among, heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to what? Faithful men who shall be able, see faithfulness has a lot to do with everything, listen, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness because you're going to need it. Be hard. Stand firm and hard on what you believe. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're not playing church. We're not playing religion. We're not playing kiddie games. This, this is for real. We, we are really, and we won't have it this week, but we're really in spiritual warfare today. And God, I guess he's still asking, was it Jeremiah or Isaiah, one of them, that, that he said, who shall go for us? Who shall I send? And, 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 and who's really answering God said, I'll go, here am I. Send me, I'll go. I mean, are we answering that to God? We're equipped. But he says, endure the hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and understand this, that no man, no woman, boy, girl, that's warring or in a war, entangles himself with what? The affairs of this life. Entangle means to be what? To be entrapped. To be snared, to be caught up with the lewdness, the lasciviousness, the, the form, the fashion of this world, conform to the image of this world, worried about what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is thinking. Oh, this is the way the world does it. Come on now. Forget that. You don't involve yourself. You don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. Why? So that you can please God. That you can please him who has called you to do what? To be a soldier. A soldier is a, is a person to, to, to have discipline, to have a sort of, if you want some kind of, like to have regimen in your life, have principle in your life. To be like the Rechabites, where there are certain things that we just don't do in our family. You know what I mean? You got to run your own families like that. And teach your children. You don't teach them who, who is the, the devil. That's the truth. Satan, the streets, and violence will take them. You have to be careful. All of us have lost. Man, God have mercy. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life so we can please him who has chosen us. Who, listen, God chose us to be a soldier. So it says, if any man, though, strive for what? Masteries. What? We, we want the crown. We, we want to be anointed. We, we want to be standing tall in, in one of the positions that, that God has chosen us for. We want to say we're doing it all right. I want to wear the crown or the badge of a master, this or that. But, and even if you work at it, a man is not crowned in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God, except he or, or she does what? Does it lawfully. You got to do it God's way. You'll never realize the victory if you try to win it on your own. If you try to win victory outside the will of God, it won't happen for you. You'll struggle all your life. 
and wonder what's missing all your life. To live knowing that I'm saved, I love God, I love Jesus. What's something missing? Do it God's way. It doesn't matter what the, I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. I don't care what their fashions are. I don't care what people, I, I don't care. I don't know many of you don't either. We're in this world, so we have to live here. We're going to live here until the rapture takes place. But we're not of it. We don't have to go along with the crowd. Praise God. Why, why can't the crowd follow us? The crowd was the one that says, give us Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Come on now. So you don't go along with the crowd. The crowd is never going to choose the way of God over everything that they desire. Strive lawfully. Talk to your father. Study, pray, study his word, hear his word. Incorporate the word of God into every aspect of your life. That's what it is. It's life-giving. It's life-sustaining. It, it will bless you. It's, it's for advice. It's counsel. It's direction. It's everything. It's medicine. Sent his word and healed them. Hallelujah. We all rely on the word of God. I have to rely on it. I trust it. I believe what God says about it. It's the truth. Stay on the path. The, the path of purpose that you know is the will of God. And you and, and ask God about what he has for you. Distinctly, specifically. And you get there. And he, and I'm sure he's going to teach you. Follow my direction. Be led by my spirit. Hear my voice. You can't be evil and treat people. But you can't do all that and say, well, I'm on the path of God. No, you're not. You took a left when you should be going straight. You know what I mean? Stay on the path and you'll get there. I promise you that in Jesus' name. You will get there. So that's the word of God. That's God's message for today. I hope that has touched you, that it's been a blessing to you. Praise God Almighty. Let's give Jesus a big hand. We're going to close out. Thank God for his goodness. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. All about the Lord. Hallelujah. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.